We directly move on with uh, Andreas Rohnfelder. Andreas Rohnfelder is head of digital innovation at Fujitsu. And as being said by the previous speaker, Jörg, um, uh, Fujitsu is looking a lot on quantum annealing technologies and the way from uh, classical HPC to quantum computing and quantum inspired te um, technologies and solutions. The title of his presentation is The Secret of Getting Ahead is Getting Started. That sounds very straightforward and very hands on. And we're looking a lot forward to your presentation and your thoughts in this context. Andreas. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. I hope you can see my screen. Perfect. Yeah, we can see it. And uh, after the great presentations uh, of Jörg and the insights he has given into uh, uh, Deutsche Bahn and the use case cases we're driving and we're fusing with, um, let me reflect with, with, with the perspective of a quantum service provider. Um, and it's uh, our point of view. Um, uh, Jörg uh, already addressed um, it's about solutions, not about um, the underlying hardware. Um, and uh, even more, um, um, this is also our view. So we are working very, very closely with our clients, but also in the ecosystem. So I'm heading digital incubation within Fujitsu Services GmbH here in Germany. And by intention, I've named my presentation, um, or I've headlined my presentation, The Secret of Getting Ahead is Getting Started. So um, let's get started. And oops, one second. Here we are. And let me start with this one. What's a, what's a famous uh, search engine? And if you type in quantum computing will, and um, you are looking for how to complete, then you will see the following four um, results. Um, I would focus a little bit on the second and third one, never work and change the world. So interestingly enough, these results haven't changed that, that much over time, meaning um, since two, three years, you see the same results. Um, also, this means that there's certain uncertainty in the market, um, what's in for me, and so on and so forth. So, wherefore, I would like to address in my presentation um, how to get started on the one hand, when to get started on the other hand, and um, what's the best way to, to investigate in. Now, um, the, the green parts are kind of, let's say, quantum superpositioning already. Um, because it's, the answer will be anywhere in between, um, never work and change the world. But as it is with superpositioning, unless you measure it, unless you investigate in it, you will not see if it's zero or one, if it will not work or if it will work for your particular scenario. In particular means that um, the answer way, uh, is dependent on the scenario you are investigating in. So the big questions are, what is in for me? As an end user, for instance, how will it impact the industry in I'm in? What will it make me, how to make me more competitive? And the big question is when, not only in terms of when I can solve real world problems, but also when to start investigating them. And last but not least, um, the Bitcoin session here or the Bitcoin presentations here are under the umbrella of quantum computing. It's not under the umbrella of quantum computer, which is the plain hardware. So you really have to have a, an overall view and holistic view about the overall um, solution you're looking for. And quantum computer is just one part of it. There are many, many more parts of it. And I will give you some outline on what we are doing and how we are going to do it together with our clients. Now, starting on the left um, hand side here, um, these are typical applications, application areas or scenarios where quantum computing is supposed to bring um, incremental benefits. Um, so it starts from encryption um, over optimization, AI, and so on and so forth, your, your simulation, you, you, you name it. And where two types of quantum systems typically um, people are talking about what is quantum annealing, which are focused to a certain extent on solving combinatorial optimization problems. Um, and the way you are programming them, so to speak, is you're mapping the problem towards a kind of mathematical equation as it's outlined here. And the system itself then finds the, the um, optimum of this, um, let's say, energy function. On the other hand, you have quantum gate systems which are more generic, but also pretty much harder to deal with because you are uh, dealing directly with the quantum states and you're manipulating the quantum states. So you have to take care about um, um, error correction and, and all this stuff. Um, independently, what 
kind of quantum computers we are talking about. You have a number of challenges you have to solve. Um, so cooling it down to uh, close uh, to zero degrees Kelvin and so on and so forth. Uh, typically, you can't have an on-premise and so on and so forth. But let's not be the whole story. We have two additional topics, and one is simulation, and the other one is emulation. Now, for the sake of clarification, simulation means a simulator exactly mimics the inside of the system it simulates. So it's much more feature oriented in terms of exactly mimicking what's going on inside the system and less outcome oriented. There's on the other hand, an emulator, and now think about a C64, Commodore C64 emulator on a, running on a PC. This is much more outcome oriented. So you're much more interested in the solution, the outcome, rather than interesting in what's going exactly on in the system. And an emulator can even be better than the system it emulates. So wherefore a simulator is more intended for academia and, and uh, training purposes, whereas an emulator is much more industry oriented from our point of view. And having said this, let's dive a little bit deeper in, into um, where quantum computing may bring advantages. So on the one hand, um, you have workhorses, so um, QA, um, quantum annealing, so uh, combinatorial optimization problems, but you also have a poor breed such as Shor algorithms, Groover algorithms, and so on and so forth, and you see the speed up potential versus with robustness. Um, now, you may have heard uh, lots of uh, talks already concerning when to start, how to start, what's the roadmap, and so on and so forth. So um, to give you some um, information concerning um, how fast you may be able to solve real world problems with quantum computers. Um, let's go first for the poor, poor breeds and take a look at uh, the, two, uh, the uh, RSA um, um, uh, encryption. And today, 2848 uh, bit uh, uh, factoring or RSA um, uh, factors is um, the uh, de, de facto recommended standard for doing this kind of encryption. Now, the best NISC algorithm um, requires 20 million qubits and needs eight hours to solve it. Now, it doesn't matter if we are right now at 100 qubits or 1,000 qubits, we're still a long way to go until you have really 20 million qubits. And beyond this, these are still 4,100 logical qubits. So as many speakers also pointed out, here we are just at the beginning. You can try it, you can make yourself familiar with it, but you cannot solve real world, pro real world problems, at least not in short um, uh, time frame. Now, on the other hand, um, optimization problems, and this is where the workhorses are targeted for. So there's a huge number of hard problems which are combinatorial optimization problems. And the colleague from BMW has outpointed that um, we are also part of QTEC, and he has uh, shown the robot optimization scenario um, with a 10% um, 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 increase in terms of performance for the robots. Um, this is exactly one of the problems you can tackle with um, 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 annealers, for instance, but this is also kind of, uh, kind of a problems which are making 60% or more than 60% of the use cases in this QTAC consortium. So a huge amount of problems are really related to combinatorial optimization problems. We are more or less everywhere. And wherefore, let me go back to the picture I've shown at the very beginning. We have various types of systems. You can start with whatever you want to start, depending on the problem you have in mind. Fujitsu, based on the recent announcements, will have quantum gate systems as well as simulators um, uh, in this portfolio. But right now, there's a tremendous focus on our side also for the digital annealer and emulator, which emulates um, with uh, it's a quantum annealer, so to speak. And we have proven a number of cases where real world problems can already be solved. And the nice thing with an emulator is also that you can start today, but you can solve real world problems today. And it's a kind of on ramp to quantum computing because whatever you're going to do here, you can also use for two quantum computers as soon as we are ready to solve real world problems. 
And let me give you some insight based on um, some scenarios we have done with clients. Let me start with one scenario my colleagues have done in Japan. So this is with, uh, with Toyota. Um, one of the largest automotive OEMs globally. And um, the problem was to optimize the supply chain. So we're around about 3 million root candidates and hundreds of suppliers. So something I would phrase as a real world problem. And it has been turned out that a 2 to 5% cost reduction can be achieved by using digital in order to optimize the supply chain. The second case we are going to do here in Germany is with Hamburg Port Authority. So um, around about 12,000 trucks are entering the Hamburg Port Authority area um, uh, day in and day out, um, which is always an issue with traffic, uh, which, which means there's an issue with traffic jam and so on and so forth. And we, the challenge is how to optimize it, how to increase the average speech, how to reduce traffic jam. And what we have done here is together with Hamburg Port Authority, Instead of, let's say, having um, uh, a single traffic light, uh, which is a little bit selfish, deciding um, when to switch between green and red phase, um, we have done it as a kind of global and optimization approach, meaning that the system calculates the overall impact to all the other traffic lights, to all the other junctions in the area, if there is a longer traffic, a longer green phrase given by one traffic light or a smaller green phrase. And that's a completely new approach. And the outcome is really great. So we see 20% reduced travel times throughout the area. And this relates, so to speak, to 9% less CO2 carbon emissions. And that's also a great example um, um, referring to the entry discussion um, yesterday about meeting SDG goals because quantum computing or emulators can really contribute to meet the respective goals. The example I would like to dive a little bit deeper and uh, what Jörg also mentioned um, was something we have done with German Railway. And the challenge here is that um, you have path requests from trains going from the source to the target or with train going from the source to the target. And what you, of course, would like to avoid that at any point in time, two trains are on the same lane, so to speak, on the same train path. So that's a combinatorial optimization problem because you have to send the trains through different ways to avoid this issue of this hard conflict, the two trains are at the same point in time on the same train path. Now, um, we're pre-constructed path candidates because it does not make any sense to send a train which is supposed to go from Hamburg to Berlin via Munich and, and uh, Augsburg, Stuttgart back to, uh, to Hamburg. So we're pre-configured train paths. And last but not least, there's some additional um, Thing you can consider, these are soft conflicts, meaning um, you may be able to use train paths which are not owned by um, the, the uh, railway company, or you have other soft conflicts in terms of normally there should not be two trains uh, simultaneously in a tunnel, um, if we're slow enough when we can be, and all, all this kind of stuff. So this kind of soft conflicts. And what we have done together with Deutsche Bahn was an engagement here where we said, okay, look, look, let's look at your current problem. The current problem looks round about this one, or at least the problem we have, we have taken a look at. Um, you have to schedule with, with um, a path uh, request for round or request for around about um, 12,000 train paths with around about 70,000 path candidates. And overall, this sums up to 10 to the power of 20,000 possible combinations you have, can have, even with the pre-candidate path candidates. Now, in the first step, we have done this with, um, uh, at this point in time, a version two of the digital leader. So we did a manual decomposition and we have calculated the solution. So meaning we have mapped the problem onto these mathematical equations. And the outcome was that we are rather close to the outcome in terms of solution quality German railway has today. And honestly speaking, we were not super happy with it uh, because rather close is not better than. But you have to consider what this result has been achieved in a rather short period of time. 
Whereas you may also guess that German railway, of course, is not doing this kind of optimization since a rather short period of time. So we are, we are working on this since years and we're continuously improving it. So this was the point where we were very, very closely working together with Deutsche Bahn and have had very, very open discussions on what can be done in addition. Because we were very close here and we exceeded the calculation time of the current solutions we, current, we currently have um, by factors. So let's take into consideration the soft conflict was then the joint understanding to proceed forward. And by taking to, uh, this into consideration, the current solution of the Deutsche Bahn cannot handle this very, very well, actually. Digital Anila, on the other hand, achieved an additional number of uh, approved training requests, meaning there's a retur potential return on investment for Deutsche Bahn um, if you are using this technology. And the calculation time hasn't changed that heavily. So that's an example of a real world problem where we worked very, very closely, in this case with German Railway, and then very, very open-minded discussion, not just benchmarking, but really think beyond the border to figure out what is possible with quantum or quantum-inspired technologies. And the way we are doing it in general, the engagement path we are taking in general, is a manifold one, so to speak. We are starting with a co-creation or ideation workshop. Uh, we have an explorative workshop, then taking the proof of concept all the way up to um, commercial usage. And we are not talking about years until we get the first results or outcome. We're talking about weeks or months. Let me just um, talk about the explorative workshop. Um, you have to have a holistic view, and this is what we are going to do together with the client. So it's not only about the technologies, the data available, um, uh, what's, what's the time to generate the data, does the solution have to be on-premise, off-premise, and so on and so forth. Is quantum computer required at all, or is a linear solver sufficient enough? But also the business view. Is it a real problem? What's the return on investment for you? Um, how about the integration into your existing environment? It's anyhow a good example because uh, don't underestimate the integration. Yeah, so it's, you better start today because, and it's the smart view also, because there's an impact not only of integration but also an impact of what quantum computing can provide to you, making you more competitive. And as an example here, um, what's the impact of reducing this? the calculation time from one hour to one second. There are two ways to view at it. One is it's 3,600 times faster. The other one, which gives you the opportunity to go from batch processing to real-time processing. And for the, for the latter one, you have to change your internal processes in order to gain most benefit from it, in order to make you more competitive than ever before. So to summarize, Oh, I see it's not slightly uh, quantum, quantum computing is not equal to quantum computer. So you have to have a, a holistic view in order to gain a competitive advantage. And yesterday was also a hint to the um, uh, quantum, a uh, Bitcoin quantum light farm, which is available in German language only. I also want to re-emphasize this hint. Um, quantum advantage, quantum advantage does not mean you have to wait until quantum computers are available in uh, respective size and have number of qubits, you need to solve your problem. You can start today. I and mean, wh whatever you're starting, uh, it may be simulated, maybe an emulated, maybe quantum computer, um, take a holistic view into, the mind, into mind. Um, quantum computers and simulators can't solve real problems, real world problems yet. Emulators can do, and you may gain competitive advantages already with emulators, such as the Janina, whilst having an on-ramp to true quantum computers. And last but not least, let me point out to two additional sessions um, we will give, um, showing also um, custom scenarios later on this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andreas, for the very interesting insights. We have one technical question from the chat, and uh, um, I will directly int introduce the question to you. The question is, how fast would factorization will take with 4,200 qubits post uh, NS NISQ? I think it's regarded uh, to, uh, as addressed to the slide in the beginning. 
uh, how fast it will take? Yeah, that was the question. How fast would it factorization will take with 4,200 qubits, qubits post NISQ? Okay, I, I have to check. Honestly speaking, um, I will provide the answer later on in the chat. No problem. We have another question from the chat. The question is what exactly the quantum computation task uh, is solving um, uh, the problem of traffic. How concretely is this done? Um, we, this is where we have proof results. Um, we have also published jointly with um, Hamburg Port Authority a, a press release. There will be um, um, a, a presentation later on this afternoon. So, um, um, if you, I would appreciate and I would like to invite you to join this presentation and there will be answers um, given on this. Perfect. Uh, that's a very important hint to the program we have on uh, the afternoon today. Thank you for that. Um, we have um, another question from the chat and it's regarding uh, address to the hardware um, the annealer is running on. So the, I think you presented it on one slide, um, the concrete architecture and the concrete uh, hardware is asked on, which the annealer runs on. Okay, so um, the, the, the digital annealer itself is a, is a, is a service offering at, um, at first glance, but of course it needs an underlying hardware. Um, where the um, um, dedicated, let's say, where the dedicated um, state of the art, uh, art uh, chip technology under, underneath, um, which implements or which, so to speak, emulates a quantum um, annealer at the end of the day, um, based on state of the art uh, silicon technology. Thank you for this. So I have one last question from my side. Um, very interesting um, um, in your presentation, my understanding was the, the concrete roadmap of a concrete project where you presented every step in this uh, roadmap. What are your um, experiences? Um, you, just, you went into the details a little bit when you talk with customers or you run through this process with customers. The, you do um, mention the change in processes which is required to really generate value on the customer side. Can you get a little bit more into the details of this changes, maybe even the culture of the customer, the culture and the pro and within the process during such a five-step approach? Sure. Um, um, overall, I would say it's 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 a it's a very close collaboration um, we are doing with the customer, a very open-minded collaboration we are doing with the customer um, during this engagement process. And by customer, I mean I also mean there can be more than just one party be on, um, because we are we are living and we are working in an ecosystem. Now, I um, uh, to answer your question, it, it's it's very important to have this openness, yeah, and to understand what is the strategy of the customer, um, what can we do sometimes. We may also say it may not make sense for whatever reason, but it's kind of fail fast approach. Yeah, but at the, at the end of the day, um, in all the engagements we have had, there was a positive outcome. So uh, to give you one one um, additional example, um, because you were mentioning processes, you may think about the um, the technical feasibility. Yes, we can solve, uh, for instance, a, a job shop scheduling problem. Yeah, a real world job shop scheduling problem. It may provide a return on investment to the customer because the customer can produce three to 5% more with the existing infrastructure he or she has. But um, you have to also think about is the um, head of production, is he or she, on what, what, on what is he or she measured on? Yeah, if he or she is measured on avoiding production outages, then you have to convince him or her what this makes sense and where there is no risk of outages. So you have to smoothly integrate it. Yeah. And wherefore you better not only focus on processes, but also on human beings and so on and so forth. That's what I mean, have a holistic picture in mind. It's not just the computer, the underlying hardware, it's really the overall solution, the integration into existing customer environments and uh, bringing Main, main stakeholders together so that you really can achieve the competitive advantage you are looking for. It was very interesting and, and very um, important, I think, to when you highlighted really the co-creation uh, aspect and the like openness aspect and the, the cooperation aspect. Very interesting. Thanks a lot, Andreas. Uh, yeah. And we're looking forward to the other presentations from Fujitsu later on. And see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.